Hello and welcome to the Frequency Podcast, where we are asking the question, what are you really thinking about? Yeah. What are we thinking about? Uh, right now, I'm Lunch? a little hungry. Okay. I'm a little hungry. <laughs> and also, we wanted to discuss this term, this idea called a social credit score. <laughs> this demonic ideation. Yeah, social credit score. So is this like Yelp or is this something else? Oh, you know, if you're a good person, you may get a house or you may get food this week. Oh, okay. It's a little dystopian. We're going to go a little dystopian this All time. All right, so tell us a little bit about a, a social credit score. So I'm going to start by saying I think this is the ultimately one of the biggest issues, not only that Christians will have to face, but mm-hmm. they'll most likely be a, a central part of it, but the Western world will have to face, right? Okay. So I'm going to, I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm totally going to define what it is, but it's a big deal. Yeah. And if you see the signs of where society is going and this desire to make everything really centralized, make everything come from one space, mm-hmm. whether it's our food, whether it's, um, our ability to get electricity, whether it's, uh, you know, having a house, purchasing any companies. purchasing anything in general, okay. there's a push to make things very streamlined and very one. And while that may feel like when it's happening, oh, this is convenient. Oh, this is really good. Who, you know, who really cares? The, the worst possible scenario is that there's more control mm. and there's a lot less freedom. Right. So social credit score and, and it's kind of happening already in China. Mm-hmm. And if we're, you know, if we're going to take our tips from China, we're in big trouble. Right. For sure. So social credit score essentially is this concept like, you know, you get a credit score for being good with your credit. So if you pay back your loans at a certain time, mm-hmm. you you do a certain amount of things you buy with your credit cards process, and you build credit. Yeah. The concept of social credit in its most sinister form is that you as a person, when you do what is seen as morally good, or you do things that are you you don't cause trouble, or you're especially if on social media, right? And you do certain things, and you buy certain things, you get a credit score, right? And it's this concept that they can the society and the state can judge you as a good person based on the things you do, mm-hmm. and good people they get all the things. Yeah. Bad people, dissenting people, people that don't agree with us, mm-hmm. people that maybe say the wrong thing or they're a little too combative on Facebook or or they might have a specific uh, way of living their lives, they might not be considered good people. Yeah. So guess who doesn't get credit? <laughs> Those people. Yes. Sounds a lot like cancel culture. <laughs> it sounds a lot like cancel culture. So we see our society is apt and it's almost like primed for this kind of thought process, right? Yeah. And so if you ask someone, they might not, they might be like, okay, that's a little far-fetched, right? Mm-hmm. But when you begin to notice the vitriol and the antagonism towards people that do not agree mm-hmm. with the overall arching media with our narrative whether it's about trans rights whether it's about lgbtq whether it's about even ukraine mm-hmm. how like how things are supposed to be governed mm-hmm. all these things when you see the fight against it yeah. you begin to notice like oh it's you already kind of feel uncomfortable doing something else being mm-hmm. in the opposite stream or being thinking something else or mm-hmm. saying something else yeah. you already feel uncomfortable now they might be like well you might not get a voice because you're not speaking our thing mm-hmm. or the way we we think you should speak. So it's like deplatforming. Deplatforming, but imagine de deplatforming your life. <laughs> yeah, so deplatforming. Well, I mean, just in a practical sense, we saw with the the uh, Canadian, you know, truckers, truckers that came yes. up and, and they went to Ottawa. They started to enact these these governmental procedures right. and, and rights where they were able to mm-hmm. seize bank accounts. Yes. Because these people had come and peacefully protested. Yes. And peacefully protested mm-hmm. is something that we need to point out because yes. The narrative going out there was that these were violent extremists, and they were individuals from all different religions, all different walks of life who were gathering different together nationalities because they didn't agree with the injustices being carried out by the government. Right. But exactly. then the government was like, "Okay, cool. So you guys can protest all you want, but now we're going to seize all your assets. Bam. So go fund me. Okay, all these people want to give and, and donate to you. Nope, you're a terrorist organization. Yeah, exactly. You don't get it. Okay, well then there's someone else that's going to do it. Fine." But then we're just going to go right after your exactly. personal checking accounts mm-hmm. so you have no access to it. Yes. We're going to cut off all the fuel, all those right. things. And this, to us as Americans, is like, that's never going to happen here. Right. We're um, free. Yeah. Unless we, freedom. Unless we realize no. everything that's happened during the pandemic. Yeah. Everything where the government was like, yeah. I'm taking away your ability to move freely. I'm taking away your ability to go to church. I'm taking away your ability to sing whilst you're at church if yeah. you're in California. Right. Like these are the things. Your that, ability to breathe in yeah. some cases. So if you are not in alignment with what they, and I say they with like quotations, what they say is good, 
Yes. Then you are now going to right. have the consequences of right. that. Right. Exactly. So in in if we're gonna just create this caricature of the social credit score, it's exactly what you said, and it starts by attacking the concept of free speech, mm-hmm. right? So it's this place where you even notice on Twitter and on YouTube and Facebook and these social media and Instagram this concept of censorship, mm-hmm. right? And it's at, at, at first glance, it's this thought of okay, they're censoring people that you know maybe shouldn't be talking because if you've ever been on on the internet, you know there's some. Gosh, there's some crazy people. <laughs> Definitely some people that, that shouldn't have a keyboard. They're, they're like in a perfect world. They would not say the thing they're saying, how they're saying it. Mm. And I bet there's people that would look at us and be like, man, I wish they didn't say something. Yes. So, But, you know, there, there's there's the Internet. It can be a very caustic, destructive place. Mm-hmm. Right. So at first thought, be like, yeah, I don't want them on there. But the concept is this. Freedom of speech is a freedom and a, and, a, and a right that humans, like in the creation of the, of the Constitution and, and our rights, it's this thought that God gave us the right mm-hmm. to, free, to, truly, to, to truly make a choice, mm-hmm. right? And even to speak what it is that we believe is true or, or what we want in a sense. Yeah. So the, the problem comes with when there's an overarching narrative and the narrative says you can't say this and you can't say that. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, you can, sure, let that be the narrative, but you can't stop me from saying it. No. You can't stop me from saying it. No. The moment that they stop you from saying it, the moment that they, they censor you in that sense, it's, that con- it's, the, it's a picture of the social credit score being mm. like, you do not align with what we consider to be a good person. And that's the issue too. Yeah. It's the, this kind of moral majority where they're like, this is what it means to be moral. And if you're going to be immoral, you're going to say that we're going to take things away from you. Like you said with the truckers, take away, they're going to seize your money. It's like, this is an issue, right? So if all our money, mm-hmm. which it is currently right now, if it's in a bank account and they can access it, yeah. that's that's one that's one strike that they can take against you, right? Mm-hmm. And then if God forbid whatever happens with um, cryptocurrencies or if there there becomes a dis- dissolving of the dollar in different currencies and it all becomes one kind of currency and, and it's control under one kind of central place, mm-hmm. it's just going to be easier. So what we've seen is things things in our society and in, in global global politics has become easier and easier and easier to be centralized. And when that's easier and easier to be centralized, it's easier to enact whatever you want, right? Yeah. Then the other issue. When they're talking about even like things like land and there's a concept of we're all I forgot who said it, but it is one of the most crazy things someone's ever said. It's like you're going to own nothing and you're going to like in 30 years, you're going to own nothing and you're going to like it and you're going to really love it. And it's this concept of there should be no private anything. You shouldn't own you shouldn't own any land. You shouldn't really own a car. Everything should be rented. What right? used to call the American dream? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I gosh, the American dream is at this point is even the concept of it, whether it was feasible for everyone and everything that's that's a totally good debate to have mm-hmm. but n- n- looking at the world now it's not even a concept that we can because understand of inflation or what no because <laughs> gosh because of inflation because you have these corporations buying land right so the rise of corporations Isn't bill gates buying like thousands hundreds of thousands buying of all of the land. land they're buying everything like so then Farms are being bought out by these major players mm. and entities, right. and they're buying out all of like right. the ability then to even be yes. able to affect and mm. produce food. Like it right. used to be that you had all these individual co-ops that would come together, and now it's like these major guys are just yes. like, let me just buy all of the stuff because okay. I have all the money, all, yeah, and I made an ungodly amount of money during the <laughs> pandemic. So let me just now use yeah. that resource. And yes, we don't understand this is happening. And generally, what happens yes. is it. It doesn't become public knowledge until it's too until late. Until it's too late. And right. then you own nothing. Exactly. So this rise of corporations that, okay, so so you don't own your own money, mm. right? Because what is money at this point? Mm-hmm. It might be digital. Yeah. There's no gold standard. There's mm-hmm. no standard that you can have. You don't have it in your hands. Mm-hmm. So cashless society is that concept, right? Mm-hmm. Then, okay, land, they see the future as renting. So you'll just rent it. Cars, you won't own cars because you, you, you'll rent it. Even the concept of having mortgage and paying those things off, right? Do you really own it? Can they just take it away? Yeah. Right? You keep going down this line to where you as an individual own nothing. There's no ownership, which I firmly believe. I had an argument with one of my communist friends. I firmly believe that ownership is in the heart of every man because, and as in humankind, mm-hmm. because God put it there. Because yeah. there's something about ownership and, and stewarding what you have. Yeah. And it's a connection to God, how God told us to steward the earth. Yeah, take dominion over the earth. Exactly. So when you get rid of that, you have a bunch of people that own nothing. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, in a sense, you could be like, okay, maybe that's a good thing because, you know, we've been really 
consumeristic and we've we've wanted to own everything we've con- we've confused owning things with being a certain type of person and even christianity may in certain areas may have gone off the rails with the prosperity gospels and the money and you know so part of you and if you're buddhist in this concept where you like nothing and have nothing you're happier and you might be happier without more possessions there's concepts to that as well the issue is as soon as you're not following along with the program mm. they can be like well we're gonna sh- we're gonna repo your car. Yeah. Well, you can't shop here because you're you don't have currency. Mm-hmm. Well, you're in trouble, and it's always gonna be under the guise of this is the moral. This is what we're doing. We're on a moral crusade yeah. to to why, like why should you speak up against LGBTQ? Mm-hmm. Why should you say hey, there a man's man, a woman's a woman? People get kicked off Twitter for saying a man is not a woman. Yet you have terrorist organizations who definitely believe that. Right. But they don't get kicked All off. Right. And then President Trump gets removed off of Twitter because he right. has mean tweets. Exactly. And it's like, okay, well, where when when somebody else, right, this, this global or this cultural group comes together and they get mm-hmm. to say, this is right and this isn't right. Okay, well, what about the Bible? Oh, yeah. Because That's where we're going. <laughs> the Bible is not this, like... You know, it's not uh, PC at all. No, what is it? The the where everyone feels like like can't we all just get along and everything's it's not. you know utopia. Yeah, right. It's not a utopian book. There are things in the Bible that call us to action. Mm-hmm. And instead of looking at something like that and being like that's evil, and we have to make the decisions for them, right? Humanity is not able to govern themselves. Then instead of doing mm-hmm. that, why don't we just right. say well. As a society, yeah. why don't we become more focused on what really matters? Mm. And that's what we talked about in another episode, yes. about the breaking down of the family. Yes. The breaking down of ideals and traditional viewpoints. Because if those things don't matter anymore, right. then it becomes a lot easier to strip people from these mm-hmm. things. It becomes right. a lot easier it, to just it. do that and to not call people mm-hmm. to live better lives and to be better people exactly. and individuals. Exactly. And to work for what you need, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you're not, if you then have a social credit score, mm-hmm. then... What is the incentive to work hard and to do all of these right. things? It's just about walking in fear. Yes. I don't want to say the wrong thing. If I say the wrong thing, then I'm yes. going to get canceled. If I put the wrong thing on social media. Mm-hmm. And you said this is happening in China already, right? So the concept, yeah, well, During we, the Olympics, Olympics especially. Right. So this, it's this, you march to the party line and you do the right things and you, you, and you follow along this, this kind of narrative mm-hmm. and you get like benefits to it right Mm -hmm. so china we understand china as being they were this they adopted this quick because Mm -hmm. obviously when you have some kind of communist dictatorship in a sense you have complete control what's the worst thing that could happen is losing power and losing control so you Mm -hmm. just continue it's 1984 it's the continuation of this is this is the rigid structure we're going to put our people in and as long as you follow as long as you sing to the to the beat of our drum mm. you're good you'll be taken care of and it's always under the guise of we're doing you a favor or this is good right mm. so now going all the way back we have america which has become there's been a seeming growth of especially amongst educated like individuals and universities that this push for socialism and communism right and this is not a, a pro capitalist concept i I like capitalism. It has its issues. I think part of the reason why we're in this mess is because of greed, because mm-hmm. of corporations with absolute greed that mm-hmm. take advantage of people and, and just decimate communities. And part of the erosion of the family is the erosion of community. Mm-hmm. And a part of a huge thing of consumerism is and gentrification and all that stuff. So this is not a, hey, com- a, um, capital- cap- capitalism. Yeah, capitalism is the best thing in the world. Yeah. But... Mm-hmm. But if you think for a second that a social credit score doesn't align perfectly with communism mm-hmm. and the very concept of what we say goes, what the, the majority say goes and an o- uprooting of either traditional values or an uprooting of the certain class of people, which is a higher class. If you don't think for a second that because we've had tons of examples uh, a push for power and a, and, a, and a fear of losing power mm-hmm. doesn't jive right with communism. Mm-hmm. Y- you're you you're deaf. Yeah. You you have not read. You're blind. You've not read. You've not heard. Mm-hmm. And it's this this place where we see America less and less. And it and it started with concepts like the well, sorry before this, but places like the Patriot Act, right? Yeah. These, these things where if we can deem you as a terrorist, right? Mm-hmm. Something something crazy happens like nine eleven. We can, we are fear, there's fear, and we need to give the people a sense of we're protecting you. Yep. You create 
You give us some Patriot, of your freedom, yep. and then we're going to hey. go protect you. And right, so then, and we're never going to give it back. Just for no, the record. no, Corona, uh, yeah, because Lord knows, as soon as the, that's the thing too, as soon as they get the power, you have to literally revolt, mm-hmm. which is what the truckers were doing, mm-hmm. which is what people are doing in the in these boycotts, yeah. and then you see how they're treated. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, we'll just take your money because you're a terrorist. Extremist, w- uh, weren't they just calling? Parents that were saying they were coming up against CRT, boards, yeah. domestic terrorists. Yes. Oh, all of a sudden, now the definitions of terrorists can be whatever they think. Yeah, whatever's convenient. Right, and then, and then the narrative, and then the, the the this concept of media. Gosh, just never talking about what actually is going on, yeah. and then just pushing the news and the media, and then you mm-hmm. have people that become brainwashed because they're brainwashed by these ideologies, mm-hmm. and it's just this swarm. And then you have people coming against people, being like, "Hey, you know what? Like, like your own fellow citizens being like, well, get in line. Don't you see? Like, you are an evil, homophobic, transphobic, racist, mm-hmm. all these different things, and it's a it's a tourney against it, and it all." flows and it destroys freedom it destroys anybody's ability to say anything and this is where we're getting to right mm-hmm. if you've ever read revelation which is honestly one of my favorite books mm-hmm. and this is and this is not me saying that when we see this it means jesus is coming back tomorrow mm-hmm. it's i believe revelation is communicating the a process that continually happens over and over and over in, in human history mm-hmm. so back when the christians in in like the early church they were getting um the emperors were killing them. The Roman emperors were yeah. killing them because they were not making sacrifices to Caesar. Mm. And then you have the whole like Nero to Domitian and all these emperors that were killing them in, in the Colosseums and people were being decimated for not mm. complying. Yeah. And, and it talks about not being able to buy things, not being able to sell things because why? They're not allowed to be part of these guilds because they don't follow the rules because they follow Jesus and they won't follow Caesar. Mm-hmm. Goodness gracious. And we already see the pushback against traditional values, against Christianity in general, the Bible, right? How would this not lead, if this was able to push forward, how would this not lead to a place where us as Christians, who are not going to bow down to what the narrative says, whether it comes down to even places on race, places on uh, LGBTQ, places on trans rights, place on anything Mm -hmm. how in the world if this is allowed to commence would that not lead to a place where you're like well you either bow down or you lose everything yeah and a lot of christians for a lot of years and are currently in other countries are losing everything yeah but we just don't believe that it's true in general we just don't believe that it's actually going to happen right because there's probably even you know those who would listen to this and be skeptical or at least it's not going to happen in my lifetime. Sad. But the, the it's already more, happening. The more that we've, I think, the more that we've gone down this road, and the more that we've seen what's transpired over the past couple of years, the more that we see that this actually is very possible. Yeah. And so, I think that what happens is then you have like a response, which is either I'm going to stand up and I'm going to fight against the tyranny, and I'm going to pin all my hopes and dreams on this person who's going yeah. to save us and who's going to be the one who's going to turn everything around. Yeah without then looking at what our responsibility yeah. is as Christians yeah. and the spiritual responsibility that we yeah. have. And sometimes I think that we become either unaware or we, we buy into this concept that God is distant and doesn't really care about what's yeah. going on right now, or he does, but he's just waiting for us to do our penance, to be able mm. to earn his favor mm. again, to be able mm. to. And it's like, this is if we are not aware that God knows the time that we're living in, right. if we're not aware that God is aware of what's going on in the hearts of men, right. in rulers and in kings and leaders of the world, he knows what's going on. Yes. But when the darkness gets darker, mm. will the light become the light that it was created to be? Right. When the world is going in a certain direction, and we're aware of this, and I think the, the, the biggest thing is what we're trying to do is to bring awareness to yeah. this. But like, then it's going we on. realize, like, okay, we have a responsibility. And yes, it's in prayer. And yes, it's in standing up and speaking. But it's also in becoming who God made us to be. Yes. So when we read uh, the book of Esther and, and we see that great line where it says, what if I was created for, what if you were created? Uh, Mordecai just chills every time. To, for such a time as this. Yeah. And it's like, God knows the time that yeah. we're living in. And if he knows the times that we're living in, and it doesn't mean this is going to be easy, but he will give us right. the wisdom and the strength, the power. And he's already given us the authority mm. to overcome the schemes right. of the enemy. Yes. To be able to overcome. Yes. Yes. A social credit score, cancel culture, all of the things that are going on in the world right now. But who has God made us to be? 
And we really do ourselves a disservice if we don't come back to that viewpoint yes. of understanding. But we cannot bury our heads in the sand, no, sand you, anymore. You can't. We can't just allow these no. things to happen around us and be like, oh, well, you know, I'm just not going to get involved Case in sera, sera, it's just happening. I'm not going to get involved in politics. I'm not going to really pay attention because, you know, I just, I'm going to work my job and live my life and everything else. And it's like, that's great that you've had the ability to do that. Yes. But we're not living in that time anymore. No, you can't. And it's like, what are you going to fight for for your future? Mm -hmm. What are you going to fight for for your kids? For the next generation. For the next yeah. generations, right? And we live in a time where, and, and also we're, we are spoiled as Western Christians mm -hmm. because there are countries where people, their Christians aren't allowed to do anything because they're Christians. Yeah. and Or they get massacred, right? Mm -hmm. the, the largest religion to be massacred and martyred is Christianity still going on today. Mm -hmm. So this is place of, which is partially how we overcome the world as well, is through death we overcome. Yeah. That's how Jesus did it. Mm -hmm. However, it would be silly to be like, well, we're supposed to suffer, so we're not going to stop the tyranny going on now because we're just going to go there. Yeah. I think that is not reasonable in the slightest. Mm -hmm. So Christians, we believe, and this goes back to our talking about pastors, having a stance if you're a leader to understand what's going on yeah. and to raise awareness to raise the flag always bring it back to the lord what jesus is doing and what he's moving in this in this place and what is our calling as christians but to be aware yeah. to read some books to understand that this is what's going on mm -hmm. man yeah. and it, this might even be our most conspiracy theorist one ever except these are like the least conspiracy conspiracy theorists because they're just right in your face yeah, they're happening they're, right now they're definitely <laughs> happening there definitely is is very clear evidence to point to what's already taking place and america has been immune to so much but it's not <sighs> it's not eternally immune no all the great empires be. that that thought that they were going to be the ones that were going to rule forever, forever they were and no. they couldn't it just doesn't happen that right. way as soon as you Gosh. allow the dysfunction to come in like a disease and a yes. virus and it's not rooted out and it's no. not dealt with well, the results are very clear. Right. And so we are already in place in America and not just in America and other nations around the world. You see what's going on in Canada and Australia. And, and these are some of like the, the main nations. You yeah. see what's going on in Europe and the, the pull away from Christianity mm -hmm. and the infiltration yep. of other mindsets and belief systems that have yeah. come into those places. But revival is something that is biblical. It's something that God has called us to walk into and to pursue. Right. And it's something that we have to understand. Yes, there's a lot, like I said, I'm, I'll just repeat this one more time. There's a lot of darkness mm -hmm. in this world, but what are we bringing to the yes, table? Yes, absolutely. In the same way that previous generations have had to fight for yes. what they believed in, to fight for freedom, yes. to fight for the ability to be able to worship God freely, right. to step out of mm -hmm. tyranny. In, and we're talking about a spiritual tyranny right now. Oh, yeah. What are we doing? And, and do we understand that we have a responsibility yes. to do something different? Absolutely. And I think even to your point, we are we live in a nation and our nation although it's been i think used by god to do many good things in this world it's still a subject to to the book of daniel you know when nebuchadnezzar has the dream of the giant statue and he's got the gold head and then the silver body bronze and then goes feet all the way down to the feet of clay yeah. and then all of a sudden and this gives me joy because understanding it like the the rock comes down smashes it all and then there's this mountain and this mountain is the kingdom of god right mm -hmm. it's a it's so beautiful mm -hmm. because what what daniel was was conveying here is that there's all these other nations and he's like nebuchadnezzar you're the top you're not the gold yeah. but it's going to continue to continue going down and then you know what's going to matter nothing because yeah. the kingdom of god's coming down and that's the true kingdom yeah. and that's what we're where so we as americans and american christians is be like so we, we fight for this and we, we fight and die for this country and, and, and for the purposes it has. And, and it's worth fighting for and living for and dying mm -hmm. for. But also understanding that, man, that the kingdom of God's coming and it shall have no end. Yeah. And it's going to be glorious. And that's what we're going to have to answer for when it's all said. Yeah, it's true. What do we do to advance the kingdom? Yeah. So we pray that you had some some insight, you know, out of this episode. And, yes. And just be aware of some of these buzzwords as they may be occurring yeah. around. But just if we can bring some more understanding to these yeah. topics, we love to do that. So Absolutely. Any questions, make sure you put them down below. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And we appreciate everyone who's listening. Thank you so much. Have an awesome week.